Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, I'm Dale Beaumont and welcome to another episode of Build My Brand. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to bring your brand to life on your website. A really important topic and it follows through on this series all about how to build a great brand for your business. In a few moments time, I'll introduce you again to Debbie O'Connor. She's our resident branding expert with over 20 years experience in the field and has designed literally hundreds of uh, different brands uh, for a variety of different small and large businesses. Debbie, welcome back. Thank you, Dale. So before we get into it, tell us a little bit about your background and why you're so passionate about helping businesses to build their brand. I actually have a couple of small businesses myself and I've, um, you know, built up and sold businesses in the past. So I know exactly what it is like um, to start a business and to try and grow a business and sometimes do it on a very much a shoestring budget. So it is a bit of a challenge, but I think that if you have a lot of clarity about your brand, um, if you understand things like your brand personality, you have a strong story, you have all your visual elements, your images, um, your, your tone and language, everything in the right place, it is so much easier to then build your brand and get people around you to help you build your brand as well. And I'm passionate about getting small businesses, getting their business out there so that they can do the best they can possibly do. So quickly walk us through what we've covered so far in this series and uh, some of the uh, recommended in terms of the decisions you would have to make before you just dive right in. Because people may be going, oh, I just need a website, so I'm just going to start here. But there's probably a bit of preparation required before you actually start building. Yeah. A fail to plan is a plan to fail. So I like to start looking with a brand strategy. And once you start putting that in place, all the pieces of the puzzle come together. You know, you put in there what your brand personality is. Uh, from there, you're able to determine what the tone and language and, and essence of your business is. Uh, create a story around that so people have something that they can remember your business by and be able to tap into that story and, and understand what it is that you believe in and, and why you're doing what you're doing. Um, then in the strategy, you, you put all your uh, visual elements um, from your logo, your colors, your fonts, um, all those things that start building up the visual side of the business. Uh, you look at your tagline and um, any slogans that you might have with your business as well um, is, is really important. Um, we've also looked at the whole collateral side, the print material side of your business, and now we're on to the web aspect of it. Okay, so when it talks, when we're looking at the web, we're going to focus really on your website. Uh, do you want to tell us when we talk about online, what are we really looking at? Well, we like to call it a digital footprint because um, gone are the days when it's simply a website. There's so much more to uh, the World Wide Web than just simply having a website. Your social media side of things is massive these days and it can't be ignored. But we're going to be talking about that in an episode just on its own. But we have to address the fact that your digital footprint is your website. It is your social media channels, um, which also include things like YouTube, which is video aspect of things. Um, the digital side also includes any blogging that you might do. So anything that is, is creating content on a website. And even um, jumps out into emails as well. Absolutely. So that's your next thing is your EDMs, which are your electronic direct mail outs, um, which you can then send out and pop into people's inboxes, um, thousands of inboxes all at the same time. So there are a lot of different areas that tap into the, the digital footprint. And of course, people are doing a lot of online advertising these days. So whether it's through 
uh, having uh, banners or text ads or sometimes even clickable images these days or even GIF, uh, GIF images or video ads. Yep. Really, the online is now a really important uh, aspect of your brand. It is huge. And being able to, if you are going to be doing any of that online marketing, um, aligning yourself with the kind of businesses that um, you think your customers are going to be going to. So for example, um, you know, if you are wanting to sell cars, radios, you might advertise on carsales.com because the people that are going to carsales.com might be buying their cars and might be wanting to update their radios, for example. So um, you need to be aligning um, any of your online uh, with what your brand, where your brand positioning is. Okay, so um, we've spoken about what it, what it is and, and does your online need to be um, consistent with offline should they kind of match from a look and feel or there's sort of different principles at play for online versus offline they are two different beasts in that um, the digital space is very immediate. Um, you know, it, it can change at the drop of a hat. You can update something now and people will see it in a few seconds time. Whereas when we're dealing with print, it's a lot more expensive um, and it, it hangs around for a lot longer. Long term. That is, yeah. that's exactly right. But they do need to connect. So when we're talking to our clients about any brand strategy, we like to look at um, a multimedia style strategy concept where if you are doing anything in print, it will link to your web. And if you're doing anything on web where you have backup print collateral, so for example, you might have um, a white paper document that you've produced, or you might have, um, you know, 10 tips on how to, uh, you know, fly. Um, and you want people to be able to download that or be able to get it in the mail or um, you then connect the two. So visually, they do need to connect, so they need to still be on brand. And if you are able to, to connect these, these different dots together, you'll have so much more bang for your buck. Okay, so we're going to be talking about um, websites soon, and we've also got a whole bunch of live examples we're going to be taking people through. But what should people have ready? What should they have done before they go out and actually build a website? We have a, a number of people coming to us and they say, oh, you know, we, we want to build a website, for example. Um, and they haven't actually even secured their business name. So first and foremost, secure your business name. Make sure it's registered um, so that you can actually trade under that business name. Mm -hmm. That's critical. Um, but then you need to find out if the website is available. Now, usually when you're trying to figure out what your, your business name is, you should be searching for that as well. You should be searching to find out if the domain name is available for you. Um, because social media is such a big part of your online strategy, have a look at what social handles are available. So when I talk about handles, I'm talking about um, the at symbol and then the name that follows it. So um, these these are the names that people will find you on on social media. Or facebook.com forward slash the name of your business. The name of your business. Yeah. Or, um, and you have, to be, uh, you have to be a little bit uh, creative with this sometimes because Twitter only allows you a certain mm -hmm. amount of characters in your name. So um, you, you need to have a look at that. Find out maybe you don't even want to be on Twitter, which means that that's not relevant. But what I would suggest is secure as many as you possibly can. And there's, there's sites no you cost. can go to to um, see if your name's available across the board. I think Name Check uh, is one of them as well. And there's a few other ones. Well. There, there are a number of different ones that you yeah. can check all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And what I would suggest is grab as many as possible, only because you don't know in the future what's going to happen. You might decide that you do want to then uh, use Twitter rather than Instagram or vice versa. At least you've then secured those, those names um, so that y you know you can trade under it and you know that anybody that's looking at you, looking for you on, on the digital platform will be able to find you. So you definitely need to have your domain name secured. Uh, what else before getting your website built? Look, I think another important part of it is have a look at what uh, websites are out there, what you want your website to do, what you want it to achieve. There's so many different things that you can you can do when developing your website. And so um, it's really a matter of having a look at 
how websites function, what they look like, all these areas that you find are important to you, write these down, give these examples to your de designer or your developer so that they have a clear idea as to what you want, nut out what your navigation is going to be. So do a bit of a wire framework as to what the navigation points are going to be, where do the pages link to, so that you know how people are then going to travel through your website. One tip that I do have is if you can, make your website, each page, only one click away. And what I mean by that is, don't hide your pages under other pages. Try and have it so that you can access each page from just one click away. Okay, good point. Now, the other thing that you recommend that people do as well is to do one of these things, a Google search um, on themselves and also their, their, their brand. Why do you think that's important? This is a really interesting exercise. If you Google yourself, you will be astounded to find what information is out there. Um, if you have a personal brand, you're a speaker or presenter, and you Google yourself and you don't come up, there's a big problem there. Um, so you need to then build your online profile a lot more because if people don't find you on Google these days, in the eye of the consumer, you pretty much don't exist. Likewise, with a business, if you Google your business name, what assets come up? What websites come up? Are most of the websites sitting under uh, yellow pages or, um, you know, there are lots of pages these days, D-Look or um, high, high Pages or whatever it is. If to continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.